Welcome to video 152 in series 3, and now I'll fill in the NPC State Pursue script. Okay, so open up the NPC State Pursue script. And first of all, private read only, NPC State Pattern, NPC, private float, capture distance, and then public, NPC State Pursue, pass in, NPC State Pattern, NPC State Pattern, and NPC is equal to NPC State Pattern, so nice and uh, quick over there. So I'll just save that, jump over to the state pattern script, and go here, set up state references, and put in pursue state is equal to new NPC state pursue this. Excellent. So now we'll create an instance of that pursue script and pass in this state pattern. Okay, for the update state, we are going to have look and pursue as two methods. We'll have to write them. In the to patrol state, we'll need to have uh, keep walking and also npc.currentState is equal to npc.patrolState. In to alert state, we'll need keep walking and also npc.currentState is equal to npc.alertState. Of course, we leave to pursue state blank as it currently is in there. Uh, and then we will also put in this one. The to melee attack state. So npc.currentState is equual to npc.melee attack state. All right, so for the range attack, then what we have is npc.currentState is equal to npc.range attack state. Okay, let's write the look method. So void look, so going up. Oh, just before I do that, let me just tidy this all a little bit. It's just a, a bit messy, really. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so void look. If npc.pursue target is null, then to patrol state, return. There's no pursue target, so there's no point going any further with the script. Just get out of it and go to patrolling. If there is a pursue target, then collider, the array, colliders, is equal to physics.overlapsphere. Now, I could have just made a variable up above, or you can do it like this too. Collider, uh, array, colliders is equal to physics.overlapsphere, npc.transform.position, comma, npc.siterange, comma, dot npc dot my enemy layer. So you're familiar with this code now. If colliders.length is zero, then set the npc target, uh, npc.pursue target to null. Uh, and then go to, to to patrol state return so that none of the the rest of the method doesn't uh, run. Uh, now capture distance is equal to npc dot site range times two. What I want to do here is to is to just pursue the closest target. So because over time, let's say there are lots of uh, enemies and uh, well two groups. As they're approaching each other, yes, one might start pursuing the other, but that other one might start pursuing something else and going in a completely different direction. So the rather than just getting fixated on a particular enemy, the AI will reassess by this method and will in fact change its target to the closest target. So if something else comes closer to it, it will instead go for that. Uh, so what I'm doing here is for each collider col in colliders, Float distance to targ is equal to vector three dot distance. That's npc transform dot position comma col dot transform dot position. If the distance to targ is less than captured distance, then captured distance just is equal to distance to targ. So that way I'm just determining. So if this value is less than what was captured previously, uh, then that means it's closer to us. We should go after that. And we just keep go. We go through the full array there, and that way the closest target is identified. So captured distance is equal to distance to targ. NPC dot pursue target is equal to col dot transform dot root. Okay, now I'll write the uh, pursue method. So void pursue NPC dot mesh renderer flag dot material dot color is equal to color dot red. If npc.myNavMeshAgent.enabled and npc.pursueTarget is not equal to null, npc.myNavMeshAgent.setDestination, npc.pursueTarget.position. 
npc.location of interest is equal to npc.pursueTarget.position. This is used by the alert state in case it falls back to alert. I keep walking. Float distance to target is equal to vector3.distance npc.transform.position, comma npc.pursueTarget.position. So if distance to target is less than or equal to npc.range, attack range, and distance to target is greater than npc.melee attack range, so it's close enough to the target to shoot at it, but it's too far to melee attack. Now, if npc. has range attack, so does it have a range attack, then to a range attack state. So that state will now look after uh, the rest of the behavior for shooting. Uh, else if, so if that all that wasn't uh, the case, else if distance to target is less than or equal to npc.melee attack range, then if npc. has melee attack, to melee attack state. Now, if it doesn't have a melee attack state, else if npc. has range attack, to range attack state. So yeah, that's just capturing. For example, it's very close now. But if it doesn't have a melee attack, then it just continues to shoot. If it doesn't have either, it won't do anything. Uh, else to alert state. So OK, that else was for this uh, first if statement. So if npc.mindhamishagent.enabled and target not equal to null. So if either of those aren't the case, then just go back to the alert state. All right, finally, the last method is uh, very simple. Void keep walking npc.minamashagent.resume npc.npcmaster.callEvent npcwalkanim. And uh, that is it for this script. So it wasn't as long as the uh, other two that we did previously. Let me just scroll through just uh, briefly, just check that it looks all right. OK, and I'm just going to comment it out. So of course, you. Uh, uncomment this, uh, make sure it's not commented out. I'm just going to comment out these two, otherwise it'll throw an error when I go into the scene and test it out. Uh, so let's just see what happens. All right, so it should uh, go to the alert state. Yes, it did. Now, should did it see us? All right. Yes, it is. So it's seen us, and you can see that it took a little while for it to determine that it had a target and to pursue us. So now it is actually pursuing. OK. And it can basically see us, and it knows that it should pursue. Uh, if it had a uh, those attack state and melee, the, those, then it would have done those things. All right, so that's excellent. That's working just fine. And uh, something I should just note is that make sure that your player does have the tag player on it, because as you know, our line cast requires that. So just make sure that is the case, that you have the tag and layer set up correctly on your player. Okay, that's it uh, for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.